Sharks, a diverse and ancient group of cartilaginous fish, have inhabited Earth's oceans for over 200 million years, some say they are older than trees, but true sharks appeared during the Mesozoic. As apex predators, sharks play a crucial role in marine ecosystems, contributing to the balance and health of the oceans they inhabit. Squalocorax was a coastal predator, but also scavenged as evidenced by a squalocorax tooth found embedded in the metatarsal bone of a terrestrial hadrosaurid dinosaur that most likely died on land and ended up in the water. Tooth marks from this shark have also been found on the bones of Pteranodon, but whether the shark actively snatched such large pterosaurs out of the air, attacked them as they dove after prey, or was simply scavenging is not known. Chondrichthians present challenges in fossilization due to their cartilaginous skeletons. Unlike bony fish, which have skeletons composed of bone tissue that readily fossilizes, cartilaginous fish have skeletons made of cartilage, a softer and more decay-prone material. Cartilage lacks the mineralized structure found in bone, making it less likely to leave a well-preserved fossil record. Measuring up to 8 meters in length and weighing over 5,000 kilograms, Cretoxorhina was one of the largest sharks of its time. Having a similar appearance and build to the modern great white shark, it was an apex predator in its ecosystem and preyed on a large variety of marine animals including marine reptiles, other large fish and occasionally dinosaurs. Its teeth, up to 8 cm in height, were razor-like and had thick enamel built for stabbing and slicing prey. It was also among the fastest swimming sharks, with hydrodynamic calculations suggesting burst speed capabilities of up to 70 km per hour. Scapinorhynchus is an extinct genus of shark that lived from the early Cretaceous until possibly the Miocene. Their extreme similarities to the living goblin shark led some experts to consider reclassifying it as Mitsukurina. However, most shark specialists regard the goblin shark to be distinct enough from its prehistoric relatives to merit placement in its own genus. It had an elongated, albeit flattened snout and sharp all-shaped teeth ideal for seizing fish, or tearing chunks of flesh from its prey. Scapinorhynchus normally did not exceed total length for meters, although largest teeth with height about 6 cm indicates upper total length of almost 7 m. The goblin shark is a rare species of deep-sea shark. Sometimes called a living fossil, it is the only extant representative of the family Mitsukurinidae, a lineage some 125 million years old. This pink-skinned animal has a distinctive profile with an elongated, flat snout, and highly protrusible jaws containing prominent nail-like teeth. They are benthopelagic creatures that inhabit upper continental slopes, submarine canyons, and seamounts throughout the world at depths greater than 100 meters, with adults found deeper than juveniles. Various anatomical features, such as its flabby body and small fins, suggest that it is sluggish in nature. This species hunts for teleost fishes, cephalopods, and crustaceans both near the sea floor and in the middle of the water column. Its long snout is covered with ampullae of Lorenzini that enable it to sense minute electric fields produced by nearby prey, which it can snatch up by rapidly extending its jaws. The pelagic thresher is a species of thresher shark, family Alipiidae. This group of sharks is characterized by the greatly elongated upper lobes of their caudal fins. Their diet consists mainly of small midwater fishes, which are stunned with whip-like strikes of its tail. They may swim in circles to drive schooling prey into a compact mass, before striking them sharply with the upper lobe of their tails to stun them. Because of this behavior, pelagic threshers are often hooked on longlines by their tails. Along with all other mackerel sharks, 
the pelagic thresher exhibits ovoviviparity and usually gives birth to litters of two. The developing embryos are oophagous, feeding on unfertilized eggs produced by the mother. They are valued by commercial fisheries for their meat, skin, liver oil, and fins, and are also pursued by sport fishers. The International Union for Conservation of Nature assessed this species as endangered in 2019. Common threshers are active, strong swimmers, with infrequent reports of them leaping completely out of the water. Like the fast-swimming sharks of the family Lamnidae, it has a strip of aerobic red muscle along its flank that is able to contract powerfully and efficiently for long periods of time. In addition, they have slow oxidative muscles centrally located within their bodies and a blood vessel countercurrent exchange system called the Reedy Mirabile, allowing them to generate and retain body heat. The temperature inside the red muscles of a common thresher averages 2 degrees degrees above that of the ambient seawater, though significant individual variation is seen. Unlike the pelagic and big eye threshers, the common thresher lacks an orbital reedy mirabile to protect its eyes and brain from temperature changes. The sand tiger shark is a species that inhabits subtropical and temperate waters worldwide. It inhabits the continental shelf, from sandy shorelines, hence the name sand tiger shark, and submerged reefs to a depth of around 200 meters despite its fearsome appearance and strong swimming ability, it is a relatively placid and slow-moving shark with no confirmed human fatalities. This species has a sharp, pointy head, and a bulky body. The sand tiger's length can reach 3 meters but is normally around 2 meters in length. During pregnancy, the most developed embryo will feed on its siblings, a reproductive strategy known as intrauterine cannibalism i.e. embryophagy or, more colorfully, adelphophagy, literally eating one's brother. The sand tiger is categorized as critically endangered on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List. It is the most widely kept large shark in public aquariums owing to its tolerance for captivity. The megamouth shark is a species of deepwater shark. Rarely seen by humans, it measures around 5 meters long and is the smallest of the three extant filter-feeding sharks. Since its discovery in 1976, fewer than 100 specimens have been observed or caught. Like the other two planktivorous sharks, it swims with its mouth wide open, filtering water for plankton and jellyfish. It is recognizable from its large head with rubbery lips. During the day, the shark swam at a depth around 120 to 160 meters, but as the sun set, it would ascend and spend the night at depths between 12 and 25 meters both day and night, its progress was very slow, around 2 kilometers per hour. This pattern of vertical migration is seen in many marine animals as they track the movement of plankton in the water column. The megamouth is so unlike any other type of shark that it is usually considered to be the sole extant species in the family Megachasmidae, though some scientists have suggested it may be relatives to the basking shark. The basking shark is a cosmopolitan migratory species found in all the world's temperate oceans. A slow-moving filter feeder, its common name derives from its habit of feeding at the surface, appearing to be basking in the warmer water there. It has anatomical adaptations for filter feeding, such as a greatly enlarged mouth and highly developed gill rakers. Its snout is conical, and the gill slits extend around the top and bottom of its head. The gill rakers, dark and bristle-like, are used to catch plankton as water filters through the mouth and over the gills. The teeth are numerous and very small and often number 100 per row. The teeth have a single conical cusp, are curved backwards and are the same on both the upper and lower jaws. This species has the smallest weight-for-weight -weight brain size of any shark, reflecting its relatively passive lifestyle. Despite their large size and threatening appearance, basking sharks are not aggressive and are harmless to humans. 
It has long been a commercially important fish as a source of food, shark fin, animal feed and shark liver oil. Overexploitation has reduced its populations to the point where some have disappeared and others need protection. Fossil evidence of Cretolamna is found in deposits representing a diverse set of marine environments, indicating that it was able to adapt to a wide range of habitats. This may have attributed to its ability to exist through a long temporal range. The fusiform body of Cretolamna suggests it was a pelagic shark. The tooth morphology of Cretolamna implies that it was a generalist. It was a predator and preyed upon large bony fish, turtles, mosasaurs, squids and other sharks. A possible factor to the extinction of Cretolamna is increased competition with newer generalist sharks during the Cenozoic. It is widely believed that Otodus is derived from Cretolamna due to its strong similarity to certain species within the genus. Early otodontids in the Cretaceous were usually small to medium-sized, around 2 to 3 meters long, but after surviving through the end Cretaceous extinction they took over the marine apex predator niches left vacant by the vanished mosasaurs and plesiosaurs and began to get very big. Species of Otodus in the Paleocene and early Eocene may have reached sizes of at least 9 meters long, twice the size of an average great white. Their teeth gradually became proportionally larger in their jaws, losing their side cusplets and taking on a chunky triangular shape with finely serrated edges. This gave them an incredibly powerful bite force, and they would have probably fed on pretty much any other large marine vertebrates they could catch, including bony fish, turtles and early penguins, and then when marine mammals like early whales and sirenians appeared in the Midia scene, they adapted to this new food source too. There's some debate about what genus name Megalodon should be assigned to, at the moment its formal name is usually considered to be Otodus megalodon, but some paleontologists place it in Carcharocles or Megacelicus instead. Whatever you want to call it, it was a ridiculously big shark, size estimates range up to about 18 meters, which would make it potentially the largest fish to have ever lived. Since these huge sharks are all known mostly from just their fossilized teeth, it's hard to tell what they actually would have looked like in life. Megalodon is frequently depicted as simply a scaled-up great white, but it's unclear how accurate that really is, it may have convergently resembled a giant great white due to their similar predatory habits, or it could have had a build more like the larger basking shark or whale shark. A preserved megalodon skull has actually been found, but no studies of it have been published yet. It might give us some important clues about the head shape of this giant shark, but until there's some official information all we can do is continue to speculate. Megalodon was a highly successful species, living all around the world in warm and temperate ocean waters for around 20 million years. During the Pliocene, however, it began to struggle. Cooling oceans and changes in the abundance of the marine mammals it ate began to restrict its available prey. Baleen whales started to grow too large for it to effectively hunt, since it preferred to target smaller species, and they also shifted their ranges towards the cold polar waters that Megalodon didn't seem to be able to survive in. The shortfin mako is a fast species that can leap into the air when hooked, making it a highly sought-after game fish worldwide. Some cases of shortfin mako jumping into a boat after having been hooked have been reported. Of all studied sharks, it has one of the largest brain-to-body ratios. From tests involving shape differentiation to electroreception tests and individual recognition, a team of biologists discovered shortfin mako are fast-learning sharks, able to determine whether or not the researchers were threatening. The sharks involved in the study after initial caution showed unique and novel behaviors, such as refusing to roll back their eyes during feeding and allowing themselves to be briefly restrained and touched while being offered bait. Shortfin mako also do not rely on electroreception when hunting, unlike the great white shark, based on tests involving wired fiberglass fish designed to emit weak electrical signals resembling real fish of similar size. 
The poor beagle is an opportunistic hunter that preys mainly on bony fishes and cephalopods throughout the water column, including the bottom. Most commonly found over food-rich banks on the outer continental shelf, it makes occasional forays both close to shore and into the open ocean to a depth of 1360 meters it also conducts long-distance seasonal migrations, generally shifting between shallower and deeper water. The poor beagle is fast and highly active, with physiological adaptations that enable it to maintain a higher body temperature than the surrounding water. This shark is aplacental viviparous with oophagy, developing embryos being retained within the mother's uterus and subsisting on non-viable eggs. The great white shark is notable for its size, with the largest preserved female specimen measuring 5.80 meters in length and around 2,000 kilograms in weight at maturity, however, most are smaller. According to a 2014 study, the lifespan of great white sharks is estimated to be as long as 70 years or more, well above previous estimates, making it one of the longest-lived cartilaginous fishes currently known. It is arguably the world's largest known extant macropredatory fish, and is one of the primary predators of marine mammals, such as pinnipeds and dolphins. The species faces numerous ecological challenges which has resulted in international protection. Due to their need to travel long distances for seasonal migration and extremely demanding diet, it is not logistically feasible to keep great white sharks in captivity, because of this, while attempts have been made to do so in the past, there are no known aquariums in the world believed to house a live specimen. It is depicted in popular culture as a ferocious man-eater, largely as a result of the novel Jaws by Peter Benchley and its film adaptation. Humans are not a preferred prey, but nevertheless it is responsible for the largest number of reported and identified fatal unprovoked shark attacks on humans. However, attacks are rare, typically occurring fewer than 10 times per year globally. This abundant, bottom-dwelling species can be found from the intertidal zone to a depth of around 100 meters, particularly over rocky reefs and kelp beds. With a series of thick, parallel, dark stripes running along its stout body, the pajama shark has an unmistakable appearance. It is additionally characterized by a short head and snout with a pair of slender barbels that do not reach the mouth, and two dorsal fins that are placed far back on the body. The pajama shark is primarily nocturnal, spending most of the day lying motionless and hidden in a cave or crevice or among vegetation. It often forms groups, particularly during summer. It is an opportunistic predator that feeds on a wide variety of fishes and invertebrates. This small and harmless shark adapts well to captivity and is commonly displayed in public aquariums. It is often caught as a bycatch of commercial and recreational fisheries. Many are killed by fishers who regard them as pests. Australian swell sharks are sedentary and mainly nocturnal, with most individuals remaining within the same local area throughout the year. It feeds on small crustaceans, cephalopods, and fish. When threatened, it responds by rapidly taking in water or air to inflate its body, hence the name swell shark. This shark is oviparous and females lay pairs of distinctively ridged egg capsules at 20 to 30 day intervals. The eggs hatch after 11 to 12 months. Harmless and of little commercial interest, many Australian swell sharks are caught incidentally in gillnets and bottom trawls but usually survive to be released because of their extreme hardiness. As a result, the International Union for Conservation of Nature has assessed this species as of least concern. Swell shark biofluorescence was first reported in 2014. Researchers presented species-specific emission patterns, indicating that biofluorescence potentially functions in intraspecific communication and assists camouflage. 
The key fluorescent pigments in the swell shark and the chain cat shark are a set of brominated kynuronine compounds that appear to be synthesized by the kynuronine pathway starting from 6-bromotryptophan. The biochemical origin of 6-bromotryptophan in these species is not known. Swell sharks are nocturnal and sleep in rock crevices during the day, where their appearance allows them to be camouflaged. They are very sociable and are commonly seen sleeping next to or on top of other sharks. The small spotted cat shark is one of the most abundant elasmobranchs in the Northeast Atlantic and Mediterranean. It is regularly caught by nearshore fisheries, but the majority taken by commercial fishermen and recreational anglers are discarded. Studies have shown that post-discard survival rates are extremely high, around 98%. Although localized depletion may have occurred in some areas, surveys have shown that populations are stable or are even increasing throughout the majority of its range. However, continued monitoring of landing and discarded data is important to avoid any future decline. This species is currently listed as being of least concern on the list of threatened species, because there is no evidence to indicate that the global population has declined significantly. The striped smoothhound has a slender body with a blunt snout. It gets its name from the distinctive dark stripes along its body, which provide camouflage in the seafloor environment. They are opportunistic feeders that primarily hunt near the seabed. As predators in coastal ecosystems, they play a role in maintaining ecological balance by controlling populations of prey species. Additionally, they contribute to the overall biodiversity of marine environments. The common smoothhound has a gray-brown back and is white on its underneath. It is often confused with the starry smoothhound, which has white spots on its back. The starry smoothhound can often have faded spots that leads to misidentification. Another shark with which it is often confused is the taupe shark, although the common smoothhound has a larger second dorsal fin. The common smoothhound has two dorsal fins, an anal fin, a pair of pectoral fins, a pair of pelvic fins, and a heterocircle tail. All of these fins help stabilize the shark, but in males, the pelvic fins are modified to form claspers. Like other smoothhound sharks, the common smoothhound aggregates in large numbers, like a pack of dogs, so they are called hounds. The leopard shark is immediately identifiable by the striking pattern of black saddle-like markings and large spots over its back, from which it derives its common name. Large schools of leopard sharks are a common sight in bays and estuaries, swimming over sandy or muddy flats or rock-strewn areas near kelp beds and reefs. They are most common near the coast, in water less than 4 meters deep. Active swimming predators Groups of leopard sharks often follow the tide onto intertidal mudflats to forage for food, mainly clams, spoon worms, crabs, shrimp, bony fish and fish eggs. Harmless to humans, the leopard shark is caught by commercial and recreational fisheries for food and the aquarium trade. This species is mostly fished in the waters off California where, after a period of population decline in the 80s, new fishing regulations in the early 90s reduced harvesting to sustainable levels. The Australian weasel shark is an uncommon species of ground shark in the family Hemigaleidae. It inhabits shallow waters off northern Australia to a depth of 170 meters, smaller sharks frequent sand and seagrass habitat and shift to coral reefs as they grow older. A slim, drab species reaching a length of 1 meter, it has sickle-shaped fins with dark tips on the second dorsal fin and caudal fin upper lobe. Its upper teeth are broad with strong serrations only on the trailing edge. The lateral line along each side is prominent and exhibits a downward curve below the second dorsal fin. Feeding almost exclusively on octopuses and other cephalopods, the Australian weasel shark mostly hunts near the sea floor.
Bonnethead sharks are the only sharks known to exhibit sexual dimorphism in the morphology of the head. Adult females have a broadly rounded head, whereas males possess a distinct bulge along the anterior margin of the cephalofoil. This bulge is formed by the elongation of the rostral cartilages of the males at the onset of sexual maturity and corresponds temporally with the elongation of the clasper cartilages. A scientist has found that the evolution of hammerhead sharks probably began with a taxon that had a highly pronounced cephalofoil, and was later modified through selective pressures. This species is named smooth hammerhead because of the distinctive shape of the head, which is flattened and laterally extended into a hammer shape, without an indentation in the middle of the front margin. Unlike other hammerheads, this species prefers temperate waters and occurs worldwide at medium latitudes. In the summer, these sharks migrate towards the poles following cool water masses, sometimes forming schools numbering in the hundreds to thousands. The second largest hammerhead shark after the great hammerhead shark, it can measure up to 5 meters long. It is an active predator that takes a wide variety of bony fishes and invertebrates, with larger individuals also feeding on sharks and rays. As in the rest of its family, this shark is viviparous and gives birth to litters of 20 to 40 pups. A relatively common shark, it is captured, intentionally or otherwise, by many commercial fisheries throughout its range, its fins are extremely valuable for use in shark fin soup. The great hammerhead is the largest species of hammerhead shark, belonging to the family Sphernidae, attaining an average length of 4. 5 meters and reaching a maximum length of over 6 meters it is found in tropical and warm temperate waters worldwide, inhabiting coastal areas and the continental shelf. The great hammerhead can be distinguished from other hammerheads by the shape of its hammer, which is wide with an almost straight front margin, and by its tall, sickle-shaped first dorsal fin. A solitary, strong-swimming apex predator, the great hammerhead feeds on a wide variety of prey ranging from crustaceans and cephalopods, to bony fish, to smaller sharks. Observations of this species in the wild suggest that the cephalofoil functions to immobilize stingrays, a favored prey. This species has a viviparous mode of reproduction, bearing litters of up to 50 pups every two years. Although potentially dangerous, the great hammerhead rarely attacks humans and can sometimes behave inquisitively toward divers. This shark is heavily fished for its large fins, which are valuable on the Chinese market as the main ingredient of shark fin soup. As a result, great hammerhead populations are declining substantially worldwide, and it has been assessed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature as of 2019. Scalloped hammerheads are not considered dangerous and are normally not aggressive towards humans. They use deep water to survive as safety and feeding. Although they have high metabolic rates, they have a tendency to be sedentary and allow currents to carry them as they swim. As a result, this causes scalloped hammerheads to be selective where they swim and the depth at which they tend to stay. They also make use of Earth's magnetic field. The hammer-like shape of the head may have evolved at least in part to enhance the animal's vision. The positioning of the eyes, mounted on the sides of the shark's distinctive hammer head, allows 360 degrees of vision in the vertical plane, meaning the animals can see above and below them at all times. They also have an increased binocular vision and depth of visual field as a result of the cephalofoil. The shape of the head was previously thought to help the shark find food, aiding in close quarters maneuverability, and allowing sharp turning movement without losing stability. The unusual structure of its vertebrae, though, has been found to be instrumental in making the turns correctly, more often than the shape of its head, though it would also shift and provide lift. From what is known about the winghead shark, the shape of the hammerhead apparently has to do with an evolved sensory function. Tiger sharks are easily recognizable by their distinctive appearance. 
They have a robust body, a blunt snout, and a pattern of dark stripes or spots on their back and sides, which may fade as they age. Their name is derived from these markings, resembling the stripes of a tiger. They are known for their opportunistic and varied diet. They are often referred to as garbage cans of the sea due to their ability to consume a wide range of prey, including fish, seals, seabirds, squid, and even larger marine mammals. Tiger sharks have only one recorded natural predator, the orca. They are scavengers and have been found with non-food items such as tires, license plates, and pieces of shipwrecks in their stomachs. They are skilled hunters and have been observed using a variety of hunting techniques, including stalking their prey near the surface and scavenging on carrion. They have powerful jaws and are capable of crushing the shells of sea turtles and crustaceans. All tiger sharks generally swim slowly, which, combined with cryptic coloration, may make them difficult for prey to detect in some habitats. They are especially well camouflaged against dark backgrounds. Despite their sluggish appearance, tiger sharks are one of the strongest swimmers of the carcharinid sharks. Once the shark has come close, a speed burst allows it to reach the intended prey before it can escape. Daggernose sharks are predators of small schooling fishes. Its reproduction is viviparous, with females give birth to two to eight pups every other year during the rainy season. This species is capable of shifting the timing of its reproductive cycle by several months in response to the environment. Harmless to humans, it is caught for food and as bycatch in artisanal and commercial fisheries. Limited in range and slow reproducing, it has been assessed as critically endangered by International Union for Conservation of Nature in light of a steep population decline in recent years. The current population is believed to be extremely low, with no more than 250 individuals believed to be in existence as of 2023. Ganges shark is known to inhabit only freshwater, inshore marine, and estuarine systems in the lower reaches of the Ganges Hooghly River system. Their feeding habits are mostly unknown. The shark's small eyes and slender teeth suggest that it is primarily a fish eater and is adapted to turbid water. With such limited visibility typical of many tropical rivers and estuaries, other senses such as hearing, smell, and electroreception are likely used for predation. Because its eyes are tilted towards its back rather than to the sides or bottom, the shark may swim along the bottom and scan the water above it for potential prey backlit by the sun. Despite being a member of the river shark genus, Speartooth shark is also found in nearshore marine waters, favoring highly turbid environments over a wide range of salinities. This robustly built, Gray-colored shark is characterized by a short and broad snout, tiny eyes, a relatively large second dorsal fin, and a black blotch beneath each pectoral fin near the tip. Another identifying trait is its teeth, which are large, triangular and serrated in the upper jaw and narrow, spear-like, and serrated only near the tips in the lower jaw. Preying on demersal bony fishes and crustaceans, it is adapted for hunting in near-complete darkness. It is not as active as other requiem sharks, moving upstream and downstream with tidal currents so as to save energy. The Atlantic sharp-nosed shark is a small shark in comparison to others. Its maximum species length is known to be about 120 cm reports exist of these sharks living up to 19 years in the wild. A distinctive feature is that juveniles have black edges on the dorsal and caudal fins. Generally, they are better suited for public aquaria, or very experienced private shark aquarists who are capable of caring for them. These sharks are highly active swimmers and require ample space. Also, these sharks tend to do best in small schools of at least three sharks. The oceanic white tip shark is characterized by its long, rounded fins, especially the pectoral fins, which are notably elongated. It has a robust body, a short, blunt snout and a distinctive white-tipped dorsal fin, 
which gives the species its name. They are known for their slow and deliberate swimming style. They often cruise near the surface and are adapted to cover large distances in search of food. They are known to scavenge around floating objects and are associated with aggregations of other marine animals. Oceanic white tip sharks are mainly threatened by fisheries, sometimes intentional but usually bycatch. They are victims of long lines, hook lines, gill nets, and trawls. The sharks are used for their fins and meat. It is eaten fresh, smoked, dried, and salted and its skin made into leather. Bycatching of oceanic white tip sharks may be reduced by removing hooks from longliners when they are in shallow water. Sharks may also be threatened by pollution. Those in the Northwest Atlantic have been found to accumulate high amounts of mercury. The black tip shark is common to coastal tropical and subtropical waters around the world, including brackish habitats. It has a stout, fusiform body with a pointed snout, long gill slits, and no ridge between the dorsal fins. Most individuals have black tips or edges on the pectoral, dorsal, pelvic, and caudal fins. It usually attains a length of 1.5 meters swift, energetic piscivores, Black tip sharks are known to make spinning leaps out of the water while attacking schools of small fish. Their demeanor has been described as timid compared to other large requiem sharks. Both juveniles and adults form groups of varying size. Like other members of its family, the black tip shark is viviparous, females bear 1 to 10 pups every other year. Young black tip sharks spend the first months of their lives in shallow nurseries, and grown females return to the nurseries where they were born to give birth themselves. In the absence of males, females are also capable of asexual reproduction. Normally wary of humans, black tip sharks can become aggressive in the presence of food and have been responsible for a number of attacks on people. This species is of importance to both commercial and recreational fisheries across many parts of its range, with its meat, skin, fins, and liver oil used. The gray reef shark is a fast-swimming, agile predator that feeds primarily on free-swimming bony fishes and cephalopods. Its aggressive demeanor enables it to dominate many other shark species on the reef, despite its moderate size. Many gray reef sharks have a home range on a specific area of the reef, to which they continually return. However, they are social rather than territorial. During the day, these sharks often form groups of 5 to 20 individuals near coral reef drop-offs, splitting up in the evening as the sharks begin to hunt. Adult females also form groups in very shallow water, where the higher water temperature may accelerate their growth or that of their unborn young. Like other members of its family, the gray reef shark is viviparous, meaning the mother nourishes her embryos through a placental connection. Litters of 1 to 6 pups are born every other year. It was the first shark species known to perform a threat display, a stereotypical behavior warning that it is prepared to attack. The display involves a hunched posture with characteristically dropped pectoral fins, and an exaggerated, side-to-side -side swimming motion. Gray reef sharks often do so if they are followed or cornered by divers to indicate they perceive a threat. This species has been responsible for a number of attacks on humans, and should be treated with caution, especially if it begins to display. Many species of sharks, including the lemon shark, are known to actively prefer to be social and live in groups or loose aggregations. A few benefits of group living are enhanced communication, courtship, predatory behavior, and protection. Group living and a preference for social interaction is thought to be important for the survival and success of juvenile lemon sharks. Group living, though, comes with its costs. A few include increased risk of disease, ease of parasite transmission, and competition for resources. Lemon sharks are found in groups based on similar size. Passive sorting mechanisms such as its ontogenetic habitat shift have been postulated to contribute to the formation of groups organized based on size or sex. 
One exception to this behavior is that sharks up to one year old show no preference for groups of matched or unmatched size. One hypothesis for this finding is that it is beneficial for the small young lemon sharks to associate with the larger individuals because they have an easier time gathering information about the habitat regarding elements such as predators and local prey. Lemon shark groups form due to an active desire to be social rather than a simple attraction to the same limited resources such as the mangrove habitat and prey associated with such a habitat. Blue sharks are characterized by their slender, streamlined bodies and distinctive coloration. They have a metallic blue color on their upper body, which helps camouflage them in the open ocean, and a white underside. They are opportunistic predators with a diverse diet that includes small fish, squid and other invertebrates. They are known to feed near the surface, often trailing schools of fish. Blue sharks are one of the most heavily fished shark species. They are often caught incidentally in longline and driftnet fisheries targeting tuna and other pelagic species. The shark fin trade is also a significant threat, as their fins are highly valued. While blue sharks are generally not considered a significant threat to humans, they can become aggressive if provoked. Interactions with humans are relatively rare, but there have been instances of blue sharks approaching or biting divers who are attempting to hand feed them. During the day, the solitary tasseled wabigong can generally be found lying inside caves or under ledges with its tail curled. Individual sharks tend to remain within a local area and have favored resting spots. While resting, it opportunistically ambushes nearby fishes and invertebrates, and also lures in prey by waving its tail to mimic the appearance of a small fish. At night, it emerges and actively forages for food. This species is aplacental viviparous, though little is known of its life history. It has been reported to bite and kill humans unprovoked, attacks may result from people accidentally disturbing the shark or being misperceived as prey. The International Union for Conservation of Nature listed this species as near threatened in 2003, as outside of Australia it is threatened by fisheries and habitat degradation. The ornate wabigong is a nocturnal species, with most activity and feeding taking place in the nighttime. In the daytime, it has occasionally been known to hunt for food, but generally it is in a somewhat sleepy state, resting out in the open or under caves and ledges, often on sand or weed bottoms. It is usually not hostile towards humans, but it can bite when disturbed. It uses its sharp anterior teeth to inflict shallow but painful wounds. Because it camouflages so well, divers often fail to see it even when they are close, and some are bitten. Nurse sharks are opportunistic predators that feed primarily on small fish and some invertebrates. They are typically solitary nocturnal animals, rifling through bottom sediments in search of food at night, but are often gregarious during the day forming large sedentary groups. Nurse sharks are obligate suction feeders capable of generating suction forces that are among the highest recorded for any aquatic vertebrate to date. Although their small mouths may limit the size of prey, they can exhibit a suck and spit behavior and or shake their head violently to reduce the size of food items. Nurse sharks are exceptionally sedentary unlike most other shark species. Nurse sharks show strong sight fidelity and it is one of the few shark species known to exhibit mating site fidelity, as they will return to the same breeding grounds time and time again. Compared to the nurse shark, the tawny nurse shark has a more placid disposition and will often allow divers to touch and play with it. However, it should be accorded respect due to its powerful jaws and sharp teeth. Hunting tawny nurse sharks swim slowly just above the sea floor, poking their heads into depressions and holes. When a prey item is found, the shark forcefully expands its large, muscular pharynx, creating a powerful negative pressure that sucks the prey into its mouth.
During the day, zebra sharks are sluggish and usually found resting on the sea bottom, sometimes using their pectoral fins to prop up the front part of their bodies and facing into the current with their mouths open to facilitate respiration. Reef channels are favored resting spots, since the tightened space yields faster, more oxygenated water. They become more active at night or when food becomes available. They are strong and agile swimmers, propelling themselves with pronounced anguilliform undulations of the body and tail. In a steady current, they have been seen hovering in place with sinuous waves of their tails. Docile and slow-moving, zebra sharks are not dangerous to humans and can be easily approached underwater. However, they have bitten divers who pull on their tails or attempt to ride them. As of 2008 there is one record of an unprovoked attack in the International Shark Attack file, though no injuries resulted. Most carpet sharks feed on the seabed in shallow to medium depth waters, detecting and picking up mollusks, crustaceans and other small creatures. The wabigongs tend to be ambush predators, lying hidden on the seabed until prey approaches. One has been observed swallowing a bamboo shark whole. The methods of reproduction of carpet sharks varies. Some species are oviparous and lay eggs which may be liberated directly into the water or may be enclosed in horny egg cases. Some female sharks have been observed to push egg cases into crevices and this would be an added protection for the developing embryos. Other species are ovoviviparous and the fertilized eggs are retained in the mother's oviduct. There, the developing embryos, which are usually few in number, feed on their yolk sacs at first and later hatch out and feed on nutrients secreted by the walls of the oviduct. The young are born in an advanced state, ready to live independent lives. Whale sharks are the largest modern fish species, with adults reaching lengths of up to 15 meters or more. They have a distinctive appearance with a broad, flattened head, a wide mouth positioned at the front of the head, and numerous small teeth. Their skin is marked with a distinctive pattern of light spots and stripes against a dark background. They are filter feeders, primarily consuming plankton, small fish and other microscopic organisms. They use their enormous mouths to filter water while swimming and capture prey with their gill rakers. Whale sharks are popular attractions for ecotourism in some regions where they gather to feed. Responsible tourism practices, such as maintaining a respectful distance and avoiding disruptive behavior, are important for minimizing the impact on these gentle giants. While the lifespan of whale sharks is not precisely known, estimates suggest they can live for several decades. Despite being filter feeders near the surface, they are capable of diving to significant depths. Some individuals have been recorded diving to depths of around 1800 meters unlike many other fish species, whale sharks exhibit some characteristics of endothermy or warm-bloodedness. Their body temperature can be slightly warmer than the surrounding water, allowing for enhanced physiological functions. Despite their immense size, whale sharks are known for their peaceful and non-aggressive behavior. Interactions with humans, including snorkelers and divers, often reveal the gentle nature of these massive creatures. Slow-moving, generally solitary predators, Horn sharks hunt at night inside small home ranges and retreat to a favored shelter during the day. Their daily activity cycles are controlled by environmental light levels. Adult sharks prey mainly on hard-shelled mollusks, echinoderms, and crustaceans, which they crush between powerful jaws and molar-like teeth, while also feeding opportunistically on a wide variety of other invertebrates and small bony fishes. Juveniles prefer softer-bodied prey such as polychaete worms and sea anemones. The shark extracts its prey from the substrate using suction and, if necessary, levering motions with its body. Reproduction is oviparous, with females laying up to 24 eggs from February to April. After laying, 
the female picks up the auger-shaped egg cases and wedges them into crevices to protect them from predators. The Port Jackson shark has five gills, the first supports only a single row of gill filaments, while the remaining four support double rows of filaments. Each of the second to the fifth gill arches supports a sheet of muscular and connective tissue called a septum. The shark possesses behind each eye an accessory respiratory organ called a spiracle. Along the top and bottom of each gill filament are delicate, closely packed, transverse flaps of gill tissue known as secondary lamellae. It is these lamellae that are the actual sites of gas exchange. Each lamella is equipped with tiny arteries that carry blood in a direction opposite to that of the water flowing over them. To compensate for the relatively low concentration of dissolved oxygen in seawater, water passes over the secondary lamellae of sharks some 5% as fast as air that remains in contact with the equivalent gas exchange sites, such as the alveoli of the lungs found in humans. This delay allows sufficient time for dissolved oxygen to diffuse into a shark's blood. They have the ability to eat and breathe at the same time. This ability is unusual for sharks which mostly need to swim with their mouths open to force water over the gills. The Port Jackson shark can pump water into the first enlarged gill slit and out through the other four gill slits. By pumping water across the gills, the shark does not need to move to breathe. It can lie on the bottom for long periods of time. As seen throughout this video, sharks are generally threatened by the presence and activities of humans. Overfishing, pollution, maritime traffic, and poaching pose risks to all species. Since sharks must swim to breathe, for the sake of fin hunting, fishermen often cut off sharks' fins without taking the time to kill them, releasing them back into the sea, leaving them to slowly die from suffocation. 